Why was the Turkey earthquake so devastating? How was it able to claim more lives than we can keep account on? Could Turkey have avoided the catastrophe? Let's try to decode it in this video. Hi, this is Palak Yadav and welcome to India TV. In a series of earthquakes of magnitudes 7.8, 7.6 and 6.0, Turkey has faced a destruction that could be the worst one of the decade. Seismologists have said that the earthquake has caused over a 100 km rupture between the Anatolian and Arabian plates. But let's get to the point. Why was it so severe? The East Anatolian Fault is a strike-slip fault. In those, solid rock plates are pushing up against each other across a vertical fault line. Now, this builds stress until one finally slips in horizontal motion and releases a tremendous amount of strain that can trigger an earthquake. The initial rupture of the Turkey-Syria earthquake kicked off at a relatively shallow depth. Now, experts believe that the shaking at the ground surface will have been more severe than for a deeper earthquake of the same magnitude at source. You might be surprised to know that the San Andreas Fault in California is perhaps the world's most famous strike-slip fault, with scientists warning that a catastrophic quake is long overdue. Could Turkey have avoided it? Now, one thing that shook the world was the pace at which buildings fell due to the earthquake. Especially the older buildings fell apart quickly when the shaking began. Now, experts in Turkey said that for buildings that are more than about three stories tall, a usual construction technique is to use reinforced concrete. Typically, the columns and the beams are made of concrete. Surprisingly, there is a kind of a masonry infill block inside these frames, which falls apart very quickly when the shaking begins. The amount of steel and the types of concrete in a building can make the difference between structures still standing in the earthquake zone and those that lie in ruins. In Turkey, there are building codes which were enacted after the 1999 quake near Izmit. They were made with much reasonability, but a lot of structures predate those codes. Anything built prior to 2000 can be considered very dangerous. The building codes in Turkey were updated again in 2018, but the country's legacy buildings are still vulnerable. And that goes for much of the rest of the world too. It's a global problem. If Turkey had used better construction material, updated the building codes regularly and also followed them, then perhaps the extent of the destruction could have been avoided. That's all for now. See you in the next one. Till then, keep watching India TV.